Hello viewers, this is Dirk the Red Panda, coming to you with Tennis Ace, a visual novel about a high school tennis player desiring to go pro, but having to deal with his senior year of high school and the problems of having to figure out what to do with his final year and, you know, high school dilemmas. <laughs> kind of had a tough time trying to figure out how to exactly describe that, really. Your basic slice of life novel, really. Anyway, this is going to be my playthrough, or basically my reading of Tennis Ace, and we'll see where this takes us. Let's go. Alright, for my name, I'll probably go with my old dog, Nico. Because Nico is Akita, and I know that the... MC in this game is actually Shiba Inu, so close, close enough, right? <laughs> yeah, this is how we spelled our dog's name. So if it's not actually how you spell Nico, sorry. <laughs> and you know what? I'm just gonna use hmm, Ishimaya. Sounds good to me. All right, enough from me. And let's get into the game. Monday, April 3rd. A cool breeze passes by, softly ruffling my fur. I bask in the mild weather of April, enjoying the feel of the sun against my skin. I can faintly hear the sound of the wind against the trees below and the chirping of birds above. I'm content just to laze around and watch the clouds in the sky. It has always been a good way to kill time when I have nothing better to do. Lately, though, it has developed into a habit. As I lay on the ground ca counting clouds, I feel myself drifting away into sleep. Just keeping my eyelids open seems like an impossible fight at this point. I'm tempted just to reach into my bag and grab my gaming console, but the thought of playing while fighting my urge to sleep is too troublesome. I am snapped out of my sleep-induced days by the sound of the school bell. Is it already this late? Slowly, I hear voices. At first, there are only a few, but they keep increasing little by little. Students are probably leaving the auditorium now and heading towards their classrooms. Others are likely carrying around pamphlets and trying to recruit new students for their clubs. I don't even have to look to know what's happening. It's the same scene every year, after all. Just the thought of being pushed around by all those people who keep trying to go to a million different places gives me a headache. I suppose I should head into class myself. Then I remember that teacher is going to be in charge of our homeroom this year. I think I'll just stay here and catch some sleep. Seems like the more comfortable approach. As I begin to feel the sweet calling of dreamland, a sudden noise snaps my mind back into reality. Did some student decide to wander off onto the roof? Students aren't allowed on the roof, so no one is supposed to come here. As for me, I just come here for the peace and quiet. It's a great napping spot, after all. The sound of approaching steps echoes. I move my ears a bit to be able to hear it better. Is it... is it coming towards me? Crap, have I been caught? I had a feeling you would be here. My ears twitch to the sound of a familiar voice. My body relaxes almost instantly. Thank God, it, it's not trouble. I slowly open my eyes, holding a hand up to block the sunlight from assaulting my vision. Standing atop of me is a tall guy my own age with a kind, wry smile across his face. His bright green gaze looks directly at my eyes, nearly as bright as the morning sky above it. He looked like he didn't know whether he wanted to commend me or chastise me. 
So in the end, he merely stood at that same spot, looking down at me with indecision. Finally, he sighed, scratching his chin and continuing to watch me with that smile. You do know morning assembly is already over, right? He sits down next to me with a huff, turning around to look at my face with a smile. I don't know how you managed to keep evading the teachers every single year, but they were royally pissed this time. I think your luck might have just run out. I'm somewhat taken aback by this nonchalant attitude. Shouldn't you be a little more pissed? I really thought he had come over to drag me to the staff room. He puts both ar- both of his arms behind his head and lies down on the ground next to me. I can feel the heat radiating from his body. Our arms slightly graze one another. Ah, I'm still feeling a little drowsy. Guess I might sleep for a few more minutes. By the way, my sister was looking for you this morning. Did you speak to her? His voice breaks the pleasant silence from before. I don't really feel like speaking, so I just nod along. His tail shifts around next to him, whipping me in the legs. I turn my head slightly so that he's in my sight. He looks somewhat annoyed at my lack of words. (sighs) What a pain. She asked me to show her around school. I said that she should probably ask you instead. She wasn't amused. Shuchi holds back a laugh. She also asked me if she looked cute in her new uniform. I told her it was so-so. She was not happy about that. This time, he's unable to hold back and laugh softly, his shoulders moving up and down at pleasant rhythm. She tried to hit me with her bag. Lucky for me, I'm a fast runner. Shuchi doubles over, clutching his stomach as he continues on his fit of laughter. It's not funny. Your sister's the devil. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. I know I shouldn't laugh. He takes a few deep breaths, trying to stabilize himself. Little by little, his shoulders stop quivering. Okay. I think I'm okay now. Really? because you still look like you're about to burst into fits of laughter any minute now. Sorry she was such a pain. She actually spent most of the summer sending me photos of her in different clothes, asking me what would look good for her first day of class. At first I thought she was joking, but when the semester was close to starting and she hadn't stopped, I sent her a text message reminding her of that uniform. And? She got mad at me because I didn't tell her sooner. Really, a high school student has to be reminded of the existence of the school uniform? Talk about a blunder. Oh, and it still looks like she still has a major crush on you. Ugh, don't remind me. When we were kids, Hitoka has serious older brother complex, always following us around and saying that she wanted to marry her big bro when she grew up. In fact, I remember teasing Shuchi about it all the time. Why did she have to fall for me? If I let him know how much it annoys me, he'll tease me mercilessly for the rest of the day. Time for a tactical retreat. Change the subject. Is your dad still out of town? That was the first thing that came to mind. Oh god, I suck at this. His eyes say, Really? That's the best you can do? But he still lets it slide. Yeah, business trip to Taiwan. He'll stay there for most of the semester. Why don't you stay with your mom in the meantime? I'm sure she'd be thrilled about that. Hitoka too. At that moment, The look on his face is enough to tell me that I said something I shouldn't have. 
that's an idea. But I don't really feel comfortable there. I feel like an outsider. Their house has stopped being my home for a long time. Plus, someone has to watch over our house, so it's better if I stay there. It's not all that bad, though. At least I can enjoy not having someone breathing down my neck about the chores that need to be done. And yet, I'm sure you will do all of them regardless. Come to think of it, I don't really remember much of his current house. I didn't really visit much since his parents got divorced. Maybe I should go there sometime to keep him company. I know he still has a hard time dealing with the divorce, even if he likes to pretend that everything is fine. Maybe I could come over. I'll even bring one of my gaming consoles. Oh, that actually sounds like a great idea. Bring the Mega Neptune then. It has the best fighting games. Fighting games? Again? Are those the only ones you can play? No. <laughs> But they're the only ones I can actually beat you in. <laughs> How can he say something so sad with such a smile on his face? Fair enough. I'll see if I can get some free time this week. I can go over and spend the night. We could pull a gaming all-nighter. Deal. Well, except the part about the all-nighter. I don't think it would be a good idea to lose sleep. Boo. Such a goody two-shoes. It feels so natural to see him smiling all the time. It's weird to think that he isn't always like this. Whatever he's dealing with, the few people that aren't a part of his group of friends, he always has such a serious look on his face. Honestly, it feels like two completely different people. He starts leaning back to lie on the floor as well. But just as his back is about to touch the floor, he shoots up. Shoot, I almost forgot. Saiyachan asked me to bring you over after she's done instructing the new club members. I was hoping she wouldn't have gone that far. N nah, she's mistaken. I've taken a day off since there isn't anything important we need to do today. Is that so? Shouldn't the vice-captain be there to be introduced to the new members? Shuchi shoots me a suspicious look that I'm afraid he won't buy. I guess I'll just give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. Luckily, he merely shrugs it off. I just managed to take make up a convincing lie on the spot. Good going, me. The tennis club has things so easy. We had to jump through all sorts of hoops just to get permission to use the courts during the break. Meanwhile, you guys had free access to them every day. It's so unfair. If you want better treatment, maybe you guys should start winning more. I had planned on getting up and bolting along before I'd finished my sentence, but I seem to have overlooked one fatal flaw in my plan. My body is still feeling sluggish from sleep, taking too long to move, and that time Shuchi, unable to get up on time, I'm grabbed in the chokehold by Shuchi, who immediately starts grinding his fist at my head. Oh ho, was it in my imagination? I could have sworn I heard a little brat trash talk in my precious volleyball club. It couldn't have been you, right? Well, this might seem like a bad situation for an average person. I'm already so used to this kind of treatment that it doesn't even phase me. In fact, even if Shuchi is a little annoyed at my comment, this is nothing more than rough play for him. If he really wanted to hurt me, I'd have no chance. That guy is freakishly strong. While he definitely has his arm wrapped around my neck, the noose is loose enough that I can get out whenever I want. Still, I decide to humor him and play the part. Yeah, shuji shan I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Let me go. 
Yeah. Shuji's body rumbles as he makes a choking noise. <laughs> Unable to hold it in, Shuji begins to laugh with me still in this grip. Feeling his body vibrating like that is a strange, albeit familiar sensation. But even though he can barely restrain his laughter, he continues to play his part. If you think forgiveness is going to come that easily, then you are sorely mistaken. It would take you at least 100 years to achieve penance. <laughs> Wait, Chuchi, you're tickling me. And what's with that number? Be more realistic. Playing around like this is so nostalgic. It makes me miss the days of our childhood together. Well, not that those days really ever left. After all, we are rolling around on the rooftop in plain daylight. Shuchi gently pushes me away from him, giving me a tap on the shoulder. Away from you now, heathen. I am done with your punishment. Heathen? When did this become an inquisition? I don't know. I just always wanted to say a line like that. He's acting so silly right now that I can't help but laugh. Whenever we get together, we end up fooling around like little kids. It's why we stopped studying together. We could never get things done. This is our last year, you know. You should try enjoying high school life a little more. Whoa, the change of subject came so fast I could feel some whiplash. I am enjoying it. And also, what's with that sudden change of subject? No, you're not. And you barely speak to anyone in school other than Saya Urushahara and me. And that came from me being worried about you. You should be happy. Alright, mom. And for your information, I have plenty of friends. Casual acquaintances aren't the same thing as friends. And I know that all of your classmates fall into that category. That's not true. You're just overstaying the requirements of friendship. Is that so? I shrug. Nothing I could say to change his mind. So I won't really bother to. By the way, what time is it now? I can't hear the students downstairs anymore. Huh? That's true. It's gotten pretty quiet. I can't either. Wait, why are you asking me that? Just check your phone. I left it in my bag. <laughs> You're so unprepared. Pull my phone out of my pocket and look at the time. Whoa, it's already past 11 a.m. 11.35? Shuchi almost shoots up. Shit, I'm late. I'm supposed to be helping with the new team members. Sorry I held you up for so long. Shuchi gets up quietly, dusting his clothes off. Is there any dirt on my back? No, it's fine. They clean the rooftop every day, you know. Doesn't change the fact that we're lying around on the floor. If this was going to be such a problem, then why did you do it in the first place? It didn't feel like a problem at the time. I'll chalk it up to a lack of foresight. Now come on. I'm sure you have better things to do than fall asleep on a school rooftop. Even if you end up skipping practice. Here. Let me help you. Shuchi leans down towards me, offering me a hand. Seeing the blue sky shining brightly behind them and the gentle breeze ruffling his fur, for some reason, I can feel myself flushing. Without really knowing why, I decide to look away and attempt to hide, like a kid that got caught doing something bad. Ah, uh, I don't need help. I'm not a baby. I'm not saying you are. But what's wrong with me trying to do something nice for a friend? I just want to help you. Damn smooth talker. Despite my protests, I still grab hold of his hand, with him pulling me up to my feet at, with ease. 
He actually pulls me with too much force, and we end up bumping chests. My face lands square on his shoulder. It never ceases to amaze me how deceptively strong he is. I mean, he already looks strong, but he's still much stronger than he looks. If that makes any sense. Ow, jeez, you're way too strong. Try to rein it in a little. You're gonna end up throwing me off the building. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you have so much fluff that you look much stockier than you really are. What's that supposed to mean? It's a compliment. I'm saying you're lighter than you look. Just as I'm pulling away from him, a particularly strong gust of wind blows against us, rustling my fur violently. <laughs> it's so windy up here. How do you manage to stay here for so long? It's not usually this windy up here, you know. Plus, you're making it up for a pretty good windshield right now with how big you are. Although I decide against mentioning that part. My pocket starts vibrating with force. I already have an idea of who might be calling, so I choose to ignore it. Shuji, though, has completely stopped. His eyes are glued to my pants pocket. Aren't you going to get that? Nope. It's in bad taste to ignore a call, you know. Spare me the lecture. I have a pretty good idea of who it is, and this will be a conversation I'd rather avoid. Shuji gives me a bemused, hmm. And in one fast movement, shoves a hand down my pocket, pickpocketing my phone. Hey, give that back! Hello? Could this be Nico's secret girlfriend? Saya-chan. Uh, oh, here's the development I didn't want to see occurring. Hmm. <laughs> the changes to his expression are already enough to tell me that I'm busted. And screwed. I attempt to stealthily walk away from the situation. Do you have a match? You told me you were taking the day off. Crap. I am. Without consent. Shuji starts rubbing his forehead. Yeah, Saiyajan, sure. I'll bring him. No. Shuji hangs up the phone and looks at me with a grumpy expression. I don't appreciate being lied to. I don't have to tell you every detail of my every waking moment, do I? Well, no. But you have to go to practice. Why? It's your responsibility. Again, why? Because you're the vice captain for crying out loud. And this is not up for debate. Shuji grabs me by my shirt collar and starts dragging me. Well, I'll go, I'll go. You don't have to drag me. Shuji. Shuji. Saiyan, we're here. Saya stomps her way over to us, nearly picking down some students that were unlucky enough to be in her path. If this were some kind of manga, I'm 100% sure she would have smoke coming out of her ears. You asshole! I'm grabbed by the collar of my shirt and dragged to the courts. What's with people always grabbing me by my shirt? I have arms. Grab those. They don't cost money and there is no risk of ripping them. There's no way you're running away again. Wait, Saiyajin. I promise I'm not gonna try to escape. Please stop pulling my shirt. Saya Mizuguchi, one of my dear childhood friends, is the current captain of our school's tennis club. Unfortunately for me, she's incredibly brash and hot-headed. Even though she looks so innocent and tries to act cute, she's a monster whenever she gets angry. And considering how easy she is to anger, one could say that she lives in a constant state of rage. Standing at 176 centimeters, she is also one of the tallest girls in the school, which I find slightly unsettling. Mizuguchi-san, 
I'd like to remind you that our new members are watching this little display here. Saya turns around to look at the source of that voice. Her nostrils flared and her brows furrowed. Not to mention that huge vein that's pulsing on her forehead. The one addressing her is Kaisuke Urushihara, one of our juniors. Despite his age, he's by far the most responsible member of the team and is constantly counseling Saya and I. Sometimes, it feels like he's the one pulling the strings here instead of us seniors. Not 30 seconds after popping up to speak his mind, Kaikuna has already left to buy himself a bit to busy himself with someone else. Somehow, it seems that his interference, however brief, was enough to bring her back to his senses. Sai clears her throat and strains her clothes, turning around to look at Shuchi. She still maintains a death grip on my shirt collar, though. Right. Anyway, thanks for the help, Shu Chun. <laughs> Don't mention it. Call me anytime this unruly child gives you any more problems. He seems to be enjoying himself far more than he should. Bastard. I'll get him back for this. Gym number three. The one that houses the tennis courts is actually separated in half by a giant locker room. On one side, we have tennis courts. On the other, we have the volleyball courts. So in the end, it was incredibly convenient for him as he was already bound to come this way anyway. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some captaincy duties to fulfill. He waves us goodbye heading towards the locker rooms, supposedly for his own practice. Meanwhile, I can feel Saya leaning, leering at my back. A creeping sense of dread begins to settle. Well, Saya-chan, I guess I'll just freeze. Her voice is filled with so much authority that I cut down before I even have a chance to speak. Before long, I'm completely tossed away the foolish notion that I ever had a chance to escape. Why are you being so troublesome? You know that about our club's tradition. We had to delay practice because of you. I look away from her, trying to ignore the slight pang of guilt I feel in my chest. She's, of course, talking about our club's special yearly match featuring a junior and a senior player elected by members of those years to represent them in a special one-set match. No one really knows why they initially made it, but nowadays it's accepted as a way to show off our best players to those that are just joining the club. This is why this match takes place on the first day of class. Do I really have to? I already took part in it last year. Isn't there some kind of attendance limit to allow more people to participate? Even as I'm trying to find a way out of it, I already know the best I can do is buy some time. It's true though, I was chosen to represent the juniors last year, defeating the seniors representative by 6-3, to three, the first time in over 10 years that the juniors had won. Heh, <laughs> I was pretty happy about it last year too. Look. Normally, I'd give you a pass, but all the seniors voted for you this year. It'd be unfair to them if I picked someone else. Usually, we host one match for gender category, so we have the girls and the boys playing on separate categories. But still, the guys are still allowed to vote on who they want to see representing the girls and vice versa. It's a pretty neat system. Come on. It can't have been literally everyone. I know for a fact that I didn't vote for myself. Don't try to be cute. You didn't even vote at all. You were absent that day. Rats. And yes, you got every single one of the votes. 100%. Is it even that big of a surprise? You're the famous player in all of Japan. And of course our guys would want to watch you play. It doesn't help that you have been slacking off in practice for the past year. I attempted to act frustrated by sighing as loudly as I can. The hope was that she'd see it and decide to take pity on me. 
it isn't very effective. Should I take that sigh as a sign that you've resigned yourself to your fate? Yes? Great, then it's showtime. Saya grabs me by my wrist and starts dragging me to one of the courts. Just as I'm about to truly surrender to my inescapable fate, I feel a hand touching my shoulder. As I turn around, I'm greeted by the sight of Kaikun's face. Hey, hey, how about we take a little breather here, okay? Mizuguchi-san, Mishimaya-san hasn't even changed out of his uniform yet. How is he supposed to play like this? Can't we at least give him some time to get changed? Kasuki, you're the best! Saya stares at him. The bulging vein on her forehead makes another appearance as her brows twitch with frustration. Just when it seems that she might not budge. <sighs> Fine. But be quick about it. I don't want to have to delay this any longer than I have to. Thank you. I'll be right back. I flash Kaikuna a thumbs up as a thank you. Now I just have to plot my escape and don't even think about trying to run away. Otherwise, I'll hunt you down and I'll make a fur coat out of your skin. On second thought, I dash towards the male locker room trying to get this done as fast as I can. Every second I take makes Sai even more mad and I can't risk that. Just then, uh, I see Shuchi standing right next to me, hands still on the waistband of his jock strap, as if he just pulled it up. Uh, s -s sorry. <sighs> I turn around as fast as possible, trying to erase the image of a half-naked childhood friend from my mind. <laughs> Being so self-conscious around half-naked people, I'm a failure as a Japanese person. Is this really necessary? I'm not packing anything you haven't seen tons of times before. Sh shut up! Ugh. I'm not usually this much of a nervous wreck around naked people, but having no time to prepare myself mentally has made me completely shocked to the sudden exposure. And it had to be Shuchi of all people. I can hear him softly chuckling from behind me probably having a lot of fun at my breakdown. I mean, seeing someone in their underwear inside of a locker room is no big deal. And it's true that I've seen him wearing less before. No comment on that one. But, ugh, I was a kid back then. I don't really understand how embarrassing nudity is. In the end, I can't decide if I should make conversation, move towards my locker, or start undressing myself. I just stand there frozen with my back turned away from him. Your eyes aren't going to fall off if you look at me, you know? Haven't you got dressed yet? Nope. And I'm not going to until you return around and look at me. What? Why would you do that? Cause you're freaking out and it's hilarious. I'm gonna kill him. There. I'm looking. I could see more than I'd like to. Oh god, do you have to be wearing a jockstrap? I could see your ass. Oh, this. It looks pretty snazzy, doesn't it? It looks like something you'd buy at a sex shop. Since when have you been wearing this kind of skippy underwear? I'll have you know that I bought this at an athletic gear store, and it's actually pretty damn comfortable. It's a great to practice in. One of my teammates recommended it to me a few weeks back, and I gave it a try. Don't I look great in it? Whatever you want to believe. You know, for someone that's complained so much about me being half naked, you sure seem to be interested in my crotch. Your eyes haven't sensed. Your eyes, your eyes haven't left that area since you turned around. 
Shut up. I I'm looking at the only area of your body that's still clothed. Mm-hmm. Sure you are. Keep telling yourself that. Shuji returns back to his locker room, picking up a change of clothes. There. I'm dressed. You can stop freaking out now. Thank you. God, my cheeks are so hot right now. Good thing your house has a bath. I think you'd have a meltdown if you had to shower at school. <laughs> I don't doubt that. I place my test bag on a bench and pull out my practice clothes. For a second, I move to undress myself. I see Shuchi with, my, with the corner of my eye and freeze. He looks at me in confusion for a few seconds. Then realization dawns on him and he sighs. You want me to turn my back, don't you? I just nod. Shuchi sighs again and turns away from me. How do you even deal with this when you're staying at a hotel for a tournament? I don't use the hotel's bath. I look for a bathhouse with private rooms. <laughs> That's kind of sad. Beats getting naked in front of a bunch of strangers. Alright, you can turn around now. Shuchi turns over again as I'm adjusting my shirt. Good thing kai -kun swooped in to help me. If I had left it up to Saya, she would have forced me to play in plain school clothes. His expression turns sour when I mention Kasuki. Hooray for that. Still mad over last time? That was my ball, and he knew it. For some reason, that completely eludes me. Those two are always finding some stupid reason to fight over. I swear it's like placing a burning candle next to gasoline. The slightest thing makes it catch fire. And for the last time, let it go. It's been two weeks already. Shuchi pouts. God, he's too childish when it comes to kai -kun. I'll let it go when he apologizes. We both know that's never going to happen. Just drop it. Why do I have to be the one to accept defeat? Because when neither of you is winning, you're both just making me miserable. Fine, fine. I'll talk to him. You don't have to be rude. Well, anyway, I have to get to practice. Talk to you later. Sure. See ya. I check my bag to make sure I have everything in order. Once I sh once I sure that nothing's missing, I grab my racket and head outside. As I start looking for Sai, I catch Kai Kun stretching alone at a court. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Pain suddenly shoots from my shin, making me jump forward, yelping, "Son of a!" I reflexive I reflexively reach down to my foot rubbing down the spot that just got brutally assaulted by this monster woman. Saya merely leers down at me with an annoyed look on her face. What took you so long? Did you get lost inside the locker room? Sheesh. I just ran into Saya while I was changing. Also, ow! She sighs. At least she's no longer breathing fire from her mouth. She seems to have mostly gone down. She's only just annoyed. By the way, I'm sorry I didn't tell you this before, but Kai is the one you'll be playing against. You were kind of a flight risk at the time. Just like you, he got all the votes in his year. This was the first time our club has ever gotten two players with 100% of the votes. I'm really excited for that. She looks like she might start hopping in place from excess glee. I've only played against him once, that, that was a while ago. But I still can't see myself losing to him. Sorry if that sounds cocky. The corners of her mouth twitch as she breaks into a smile. To be honest, I also think you'll win. 
But then again, this is tennis. Never put it past your opponent to win by an upset. You should be happy. This will be a great chance for you to practice. You'll probably play against him during the perfectuals anyway. Yeah, great. Practice I didn't even want to get. Such an amazing opportunity indeed. I grumble unhappily in place, still thinking of the throbbing pain in my shin. God damn it, even if she was just playing around, she kicked way too hard. She has a look of haughty disturbation on her face as she shakes her head sideways, making an exaggerated shrug. I find your lack of enthusiasm disturbing. Really? You're quoting Galaxy Wars in regular conversation now? I know she's a film nerd, but there's a limit to everything. Hey, if it fits the situation, then why shouldn't I? With a big smile on her face, Saya shrugs one last time before walking away towards the umpire chair, leaving me to watch in dismay as Kaikun finishes his preparations. Wait, the umpire chair? She's the one that will be overseeing the match today? Oh, this is just great. Is our coach absent today again? I swear, that man takes every opportunity he has to slack off. And on the first day of class? Really? Deciding to think nothing more of it, I proceed to do the most basic warm-up, making sure to finish it in less than five minutes. It's not my usual warm-up routine. But then again, I don't even care about this match in the first place. I wish I was home. As I make my way to the court, I can hear some of my clubmates whispering here and there, most of them sounding really excited for some reason. I guess Saya wasn't kidding when she said that people had been looking up to this match. Damn it, why do I have such a stupid grin on my face? I'm letting the excited mood permeating the gym affect me. I see that Kai Kun is waiting for me, having already finished his warm up routine. Even though he was running around and doing stretches up until now, his clothes still look to be in pristine condition. As he sees me coming over, he flashes a smile. How are you feeling right now? You seem a little out of it earlier. Did Sayakusan give you too much trouble? Even though he was referring to us by our last names while other club members were around, now that we're out of earshot of other people, he's back to calling us by our first names. Which is great, because I hate the excessive deference people treat me with just because I happen to be a bit older. Age is just a number after all. Sorry, I was still half asleep earlier today. Saya gave me one hell of a kick to the shin, though, so that's jolted me awake. He seems almost amused by hearing it. He's been exposed to Saya for so long, he's not even battling, batting an eye to random acts of violence. This one has already been corrupted by us. As long as you're not limping, it should be fine. I'd be wary of angering her again, though. I'll say. Feels like I had a few years knocked out of my life expectancy. Saya's one scary girl when she's angry. He laughs at my remark, his normally deep voice carrying softly through the air. He's pretty subdued most of the time, but I guess there's a certain air of refinement to him. Like, almost as if he wasn't just some average high school student. Well, since we'll be playing only one set, stamina won't be much of a problem. How about we go at each other guns blazing from the start? Sounds good to me. How do we decide who gets the first serve? Should we just flip a coin? If it's okay with you, I'd like for you to take the first serve. I know it's usually your preference, and I'd like to give it a try. Um, sure, I guess. 
I mean, if you're really okay with that. I am. I think it will be a great opportunity for me to try out a new strategy I have come up with. Now, if you don't mind, I'll say with this side of the court. Shall we get started? I nodded, wishing him good luck and heading over to my side of the court. What's up with him willingly giving me the first serve? He's totally underestimating me, isn't he? I walk over to my starting position and one of the freshmen hands me a hands me a two balls. <laughs> I guess Saya's roped them into being our ball boys for the match, huh? I take a few deep breaths to steady myself. Once I walk onto the court, I shouldn't focus on anything but my opponent. It doesn't matter if it's a tournament match or an exhibition match. It's all still tennis in the end. And I refuse to give anything less than my all when it comes to tennis.